everybody, KC Zero, VII Tom here, and it is the end of September, first day of October weekend, and it's like having an argument with summer here in the Midwest. All of a sudden, summer left, and for a few days, and it came back in the room and says, and another thing! Uh, normally, first week of October, we have highs in the 60s, lows in the 40s, but not this weekend. Here in the Midwest, it, uh, Saturday, I had 94 degrees here at the house, very high humidity, dew points were in the mid-70s. I think humidity was in the 80% range. Makes it really uncomfortable and hard to work around the house outside. Today we're looking at 91 and the dew points are going to stay in the 60s, but it's going to be the upper 60s. It's pretty dangerous out there. It's so bad out there that the Twin City Marathon canceled kind of at the last minute. Felt kind of sorry for those people out there. You train for about a year to run in a marathon and within an hour of the start time it's canceled. Uh, so if you see a lot of runners out there kind of wandering around, you know, feel sorry for them. But, um, Today what we want to do is talk about is Mars modification on radios. Mars is Military Auxiliary Relay Service, if I get my acronym correct, if I'm not sorry. Um, what this is, it's a volunteer service to send messages uh, for our service personnel across the world to the loved ones at home and you know, re resending the messages from loved ones back to the personnel. Uh, these frequencies are picked just outside the ham band for most of the uh, area. The uh, reason they do that because a lot of manufacturers have a simple modification by removing a component from the, uh, the circuit board. You can open up that transmit range on your amateur radio equipment to be able to talk to these personnel uh, to send out and receive messages for everybody. Uh, some people don't think it's correct, right that you should Mars monitor radio because now you have the potential of transmitting uh, in an area that your license is not um, you're authorized, which is true. I mean, before you can actually do any work with Mars, you have to get authorization through them, and they kind of have a little way, you know, process to go through. In any other place that you open up your transmitter, um, you want to make sure before you start communicating with this this other organization that you have their approval to work with them. Um, it can be not a good deal where you may take just you can go out and buy a simple you know radio and take out the component and now that gives you on the two meter band 136 to 174 uh and same with our 70 centimeter band up in the 400 megahertz you can open up a good chunk of transmitting area and you can go in there and mess with public safety uh business band or land mobile band and you know that's not right so if you're going to do it make sure you do it for the right reason um here in mitchell county um the reason I'm into Mars uh, mods on my radios is uh, storm spotted in Mitchell County is on the Sheriff Department channel 156 210 megahertz and uh, our sheriff has decided um, he is not going to put the county up to the new digital trunking standard the APCO 25 or the P25 or the armor system whatever you're at and what they call it due to the fact that he claims it'll cost the county over a million dollars to get the county up to that new radio standard and when I first heard about it, it was kind of like, whoa, wait a minute, he can't do that. Because it was a few years ago, well, about five, six years ago now, I guess, I'm getting old. Uh, the federal government, a lot of the agencies in the Fed decided that by 2024 or 2025, um, all public safety agencies must be on the new digital standard. It was going to be 24, they got pushed back here. Then silently they rescinded that, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, a lot of organizations, public safety, police, um, personnel safety, uh, fire departments, all those organization groups that represents the, our public safety people are putting a lot of pressure on the FCC and says, look, uh, back when we went from wide band to narrow band, that was an econ you know, economic crisis for a lot of these small towns where it really hurt them. They had to shell out some money to replace radios. These radios were working fine. It's just that now the new standard went from wide band to narrow band. Now you want to do it again to us where we're going to have to actually remove radios that we are forced to buy out of our uh, budget cycle and you know you know to be able to uh, do our job so it's they slowly quietly rescinded that it's encouraged any grant money out there normally has a stipulation it must be used for the uh, the new digital st uh, system so and I was going through in you know, my head on the way to work one day thinking of all you know all the equipment the sheriff's had and a million dollars is way overblown but he did say sheriff's department he said countywide uh, so that means, you know, Mitchell County, we got quite a, a couple of large towns and quite a few small towns like St. Andrew, a thousand people. Then a lot of smaller towns are around 100 to 200 people at most. And there is a city service where, you know, here at St. Andrew, anytime we have a fire call, a rescue call, our city utility guys actually will show up there, help out in the sea, mainly for manpower. Um, 
every once in a while they need a, a front end loader to uh, knock down you know part of the structure that's on fire or move some uh, debris out of the road from a you know tree going down and if those guys are monitoring the you know the public safety channel they get a head start and they can actually get down there a lot faster so it's in these small towns here in the midwest there's a lot of helping out even before the call is put out so um so yeah, you know, if we're gonna rent airtime or is the county gonna buy the own repeater system? So million dollars is kind of short. I think it'd be more like 1.5 due to the fact that with Minnesota straight to the north of us, a lot of the phase one channels are already used. So we'd have to go up to the phase two, which is the 700 megahertz channel, the newer radios, and since they're newer radios, they're a little bit more expensive. So, but Mars Vaughn got off on a tangent there. Um, quite a few, Episodes ago, TLJ and I were coming back from field day. Uh, I went up there first with a camper. Uh, she had a customer come in and buying a lot of stuff, so she kind of hailed behind here. And as soon as that sale was done, she, she joined me up at field day. Um, we got back that Sunday night. We got everything put away. We're sitting on the couch watching the news, and she made the comment says, is it possible to have all the radios in the cars be the same model so it's easier for me to operate them? I looked at her and go, really? She goes, yeah. You know, then the proverbial, Heavens opened up, shaft of light came down, angels were singing, oh! You know, my LY, LY just gave me permission to buy new radios. Um, and uh, I didn't get too cocky at the moment. I said, okay, dear, I want to know where she was going with this. So I asked her, what type of radio do you want? Because what I want in a radio is dual band, uh, built-in GPS, built-in TNC for APRS, and I turned to her and says, what do you want? I was expecting like an HF rig in there. I thought I was going to have to buy a couple more FT um, 991As for each car in the camper. And she goes, well, not a lot of buttons, not a lot of knobs, a uh, large screen so I can see it, and uh, something easy to operate. So we started, took those parameters, started checking around, and came up with the F Yesu FTM 400. We did a video. I'll put the uh, link to these two videos in the description below. I think it's one video. Anyway, and... Uh, did a nice review. It's a nice little radio. Now some people are going to say, "Well, that's an old radio. You should buy something better." Yeah, but it works great. So why should I bother? You know, buying something new and this one works. You know, it's nothing wrong with it. Um, then you know, I bought it from Giga Parts, brand new radio, and they offered the Mars mod for like thirty-five dollars. And since they would do it, it does not void your warranty. Because when you do this Mars mod on a radio, if you have any bit of warranty left, it's gone. It's just voided out. Uh, threw it in the car and she was working with it off and on really liked this So you got a second one for her vehicle and they're programmed identically uh, To each other the only change between the two is her call sign was on her car Radio for APRS when you first heard on and mine had my call sign for obvious reasons, you know and uh, Things life changed and now I've you know they announced a few year, uh, year and a half ago roughly that the uh, this model is no longer being made uh, for one reason or another. And I wasn't too happy because the ones that were still in like Giga Parts, the DX Engineering, Engineering, HRO, and these other large ham stores, all of a sudden the price jumped up. I was checking the prices and noticed in one week, they all went up like $300, which I thought was not nice guys, come on. And uh, so I started checking the used market and picked this one up. This one was actually from a operator down in Missouri, if I remember right, Southern Missouri. He had bought it, put it in his camper, and never got around to it. And he's, you know, he sold it to me on eBay. He said, you know, it says brand new, been out of the box, wants to look at, never installed. I thought, oh yeah, I heard this before, but yeah, sure enough, took it out. It still had the little plastic cover on the uh, uh, display unit. Uh, power cables were still wrapped up nice, factory. You know, it was never turned on. It seemed like he just looked at it, set it off to the side, and I know how that is. You don't get around to doing it. So. Again, so this makes number three. Each car has one, and this will go in the camper. Uh, this will go back in the um, camping section of the camper, I guess you'd say it. Uh, so when we get on site, we'll use that for our two meter or four, um, 70 centimeter operation. In the nose of the camper, in the cab section, I do have a Kenwood D700. Yeah, yeah, you know, right? Yeah, it's a nice little radio, so shut up. Um, that is used when we're going somewhere. It is uh, for communication, uh, two meter and 77 meters. Then when we get on site, then I switch it over to a um, cross band repeat, which makes it really nice. You walk around and work in the campsite or at the training site, and from your handheld, talk back to the camper, then from the camper, it goes to the local repeater. It really improves communication. So, um, Mars Mod, again, normally it's one resistor or diode you remove, and I have six stitches. I'd love to make a deal with somebody.
Um, did a little search online. There's a couple of videos that weren't very good videos and you'll see why the videos weren't very good. K9 EQ has a real nice write-up, uh, nice little picture on it. Well, uh, I'll put that link into the uh, description down below and uh, let's go inside the radio. Okay, here's K9 EQ's little PDF of how to do the Mars mod. Uh, you can't read the uh, instructions, but he's got some real nice step-by-step -step instructions. We'll zoom in here to the picture. On the circuit board, there is a white X, and below the white X are two vertical resistors and two horizontal resistors. The top horizontal resistor where the orange arrow is at, that is resistor R1548. That is the one we want to carefully remove. Now, we'll set the radio here. Now to take the cover off, these four screws hold the speaker on. Do not, repeat, do not take those off. What you want to do is take these four screws on the top, on the cover, two on this end, and there's two more on the other end. Then the cover will come off with a little prying. Fast forward here as I take the six screws out. Remember, there's four on the top and two on each side. Have a little cup, put them in there, really small screws. Now you want to take the screwdriver and gently pry a little bit just because it's in there a snug fit. And once you get the cover pop free a little bit, real carefully lift up. The speaker wires are kind of short and if you pull too hard on the uh, lid you can damage the speaker. You can see how long those speaker lines are. They run down to a little plug there. Just reach in there and gently tug, pull on that connector and it'll pop out. Now you can set the cover off to the side and up underneath this white sticker with the word update on it that covers up there's a switch there for if you do a, some type of update you have to throw that switch as a hole in the uh, case with a rubber plug on it. We'll just simply peel that little sticker off. As you can see the battery from the picture and that little white X we'll try to get zoomed in here pan up a little bit. As you can see, the little white X to the left of that X are the two vertical resistors and right below it is the two horizontal resistors. And you want to remember, take the first one off. Now be extremely careful. These are extremely small and the traces on the board are extremely thin. I'm trying to get a good shot somewhat in focus to have an idea what we're looking at. Again, that's the guy we want to go for. Just got up uh, from the basement. Um, down there on the solder station, I got a fairly decent Weller station along with a nice magnifying lens so you can make these little parts on the radios look real big. And boy, those parts are very small. This is the screwdriver I showed in the video. And as you, you notice when I put this, I'll replay that video here. When I've got the screwdriver up next to the, uh, the diode we have to pull out or the component, how much bigger the screwdriver is into the component. So yeah, we bailed on this job. This is not gonna happen. I think I'll, I know in the electronics department at the college I work at, they do have some desolder stations. I'll swing by there this week and see um, if I could bring the radio in, we could do it there real quick. The problem I was having, the radio is here and with wherever I was getting the, fire, uh, the magnifying glass in, so make it nice and the, everything was in focus and nice and sharp. There wasn't enough room for me to get in there with the soldering iron. Uh, to get in there and desolder that component. So instead of destroying the board or damaging the board, I just, yep, yeah, we're gonna board on this. We're gonna bail out. So Mars Mod is good if you use it correctly. Um, again, I have to use Mar Mars Mod here, say that five times fast, here in Mitchell County, due to the fact that our county still is operating on the VHF analog systems for now. Eventually they're gonna have to go up to the digital system, but until then, we're gonna play old time school. So on that, I'm gonna see how bad the Vikings are playing today and possibly I got steaks thrown on the grill tonight. I'm gonna enjoy this hot weather, probably be the last hot spell for the year. Everybody out there, stay safe, have fun, enjoy the fall. I wanna get some camping done, 7-3.
Make sure to tell your friends, neighbors, other hams. Subscribe, hit that bell to get notification when new videos come out. Add comments below. 7-3 everybody.